Good evening. Um, if you will join me in a moment of silent prayer. Amen. If you will join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Life Scout Michael Gray is going to lead us with our pledge. Go ahead, Michael. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Outstanding job by Troop 398, St. Mark's Life Scout, Michael Gray. Michael, thanks for being with us tonight and leading us in the pledge. He's working on his citizenship in the community and communications merit badge. And, Michael, if you get some good ideas through that, you might share them with us because sometimes we need good ideas up here too, okay? <laughs> Also, I think we have some members of Youth Leadership Rutherford. Is that right with us tonight? Is that right? Please stand up. Michael, I see you out there. Good. We're glad that you all are here. And sometimes people seem so young to me that I can't tell whether they're in Youth Leadership or in Leadership Rutherford. So we're really glad you're here tonight with us. And you're free to stay or free to go. You can stay as long as you want to, okay? Nice to have you with us. All right, council members, this is the Murfreesboro City Council, December the 6th, 2012. And uh, I'd like for you to, if you're ready, to consider the consent agenda. And I would note that item J, we had two bidders that bid uh, the same discount for Christmas gift certificates for our employees. Uh, that was between Junior's Food Land and the Kroger Company, so I appreciate both of them bidding on that. They had the same discount offered, but the Kroger Company uh, offered uh, that discount through the end of July, I believe. Is that right? June or July, and uh, Junior's was only through the end of January. So uh, I don't know that that makes any difference, but it certainly makes a difference to juniors if they don't get the business. And uh, I just appreciate juniors being a downtown presence for such a long time. And uh, I certainly recommend both of those fine companies. Uh, but that's the kind of the difference in item J on the consent agenda. Mayor? And, yes. I may say, I believe Junior's goes through the, the, the bid requirement, which was through June or July, but Kroger's was no expiration. No, it's, it's right. no, no expiration. No expiration. Okay. All right. So that's why the city staff has recommended Kroger. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, sir. And then item uh, C under K, which is the Department's of uh, Water and Sewer Department's participation in installing an, an irrigation system on a City of Murfreesboro youth golf course has been uh, withdrawn for this evening. So those are the only two notes that I see to the consent agenda. Any other questions regarding the consent agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as it has been presented? And that would be the Christmas gift certificates would go uh, through the Kroger company. Move for approval. Second. All right, Mr. Washington, Mr. Gilly, thank you. Please call the roll. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. Excuse me. Minutes of the October 22nd special meeting, the October 29th special meeting, the November 8th regular meeting, and the November 15th regular meeting are before you. Are there any additions to deletions to those minutes as they've been presented? Not Mayor, I move we accept the minutes as presented. Second. All right, thank you. A motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gilles Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. At this time we'll consider for passage on second reading. 
an ordinance to amend an area zone plan industrial development PID district located along Joe B. Jackson Parkway. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Please call the roll. Mr. Gilley? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. At this time again on second reading, we'll consider for passage an ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance regarding land use intensity ratio for multifamily developments. So moved. Second. Motion in second. Please call the roll. Mr. Gilley? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. At this time, pursuant to a resolution adopted by City Council on November the 8th, 2012, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider amendments to Appendix A Zoning, Section 15 and 24, and Chart 2, dealing with the creation of a City Corps Overlay CCO District Planning staff is the applicant. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18th, 2012 issue of the local newspaper. <coughs> Welcome, Mr. Adelot. Thank you, Mayor Bragg and members of the council. Tonight we're going to conduct a, a series of public hearings, and all of those public hearings relate to the subject of the City Core Overlay District. The uh, first public hearing, however, is to consider amendments to our zone ordinance, and that's what I'm going to introduce. The rest of the public hearings will be introduced by Ms. Ely. The text, uh, what we're going to propose is to create a new section in our zone ordinance that allows for a, an overlay district to be called the City Core Overlay. Uh, this project has been worked on for the better part of three years now. For two years we've been studying it, and then in the last year we have uh, been working on ordinance amendments to address what we've uh, found in our studies. What we have found in our studies of the South Manny Avenue area is that there is an, what I would say is a mismatch of zoning and land use. Uh, this area in large part was developed before the city ever had zoning, uh, or it was developed with the city having a different zone ordinance. And as a result, the zone ordinance we adopted in 1984, which is a much more suburban type zone ordinance, does not match that land very well and it is not leading to a redevelopment in a positive manner. So what we're seeing is a need for lots of variances to keep the status quo. What we were proposing is to uh, amend the ordinance, as I said, to allow for our zoning to better match the area. Uh, some of the things we've observed, a lot of small lots. The lots are smaller than uh, the zoning currently permits. A lot of the lots in the RS-10 area are more like RS-8. A lot of the lots in the RS-8 area are smaller than 8,000 square feet. A lot of the lots in RS4 zone are smaller than 4,000 square feet. Many of the structures are, to, are closer to the street than the required setbacks. For instance, in the RS8 zone, a 30-foot required setback is uh, provided. Uh, but the, many of the buildings are only about 10 or 15 feet. The, the problem is that the neighbors, the people who own property, the residents, like the neighborhood, and they don't want to see a fundamental change. And as I'm, uh, as a city's planning director, I don't see a need for a fundamental change in this respect. So one of the things we're doing with our ordinance amendment is to lessen the required setbacks in this overlay district for the property. And in fact, what we're looking to do is to average the setbacks. Most of the lots are already built on, but if you are going to rebuild, you'll be looking at an averaging of what's beside you so that you're not going to sit back further from the street than everybody else or dramatically closer to the street you'll be a lot the same as the other houses. Uh, this has been something that the Habitat for Humanity has asked us to do repeatedly, and it's something that we thought was time to do. Also in that area, there's a lot of non-conforming uses. Uh, we have some uh, barber and beauty shops that aren't permitted in the current zoning. There are some funeral homes that aren't permitted in the current zoning. There are some uh, other <coughs> small businesses that aren't permitted in the current zoning, like restaurants. These are non-conforming uses. Uh, yes, we know that they can exist in, indefinitely, but the trouble is, were we to have a catastrophic tornado and they try to rebuild, they wouldn't be allowed to. We had an experience with the uh, what was formerly Glanton's Market and is now Jeff's Restaurant. Uh, Mr. Sewell had a wonderful idea to uh, reuse that property as a restaurant. It had formerly been a market. But we went through about a uh, six-month uh, zoning process. He invested several thousand dollars in an application just to do a, 
what was a good idea to begin with. I go to the restaurant now, and I've wondered many times, why did we do that? Well, because the zoning didn't allow it, and I had no way under our zoning ordinance to allow it. Under these proposed amendments, Mr. Sewell would become a conforming use, the same way with the uh, Clearview uh, restaurant. Uh, but they would require special approval by the Board of Zone Appeals, a much more streamlined process. If they meet the requirements of the uh, zone ordinance overlay district, they would be able to go to the Board of Zone Appeals and get approval inside of 30 days to move forward with permitting. So it would be a much less expensive process, but it would still offer protections to the neighborhood uh, where they're located and it would make them conforming uses. So these are the, the uh, basics of what we're talking about. The ordinance is about uh, 20 pages on standard uh, letter size, probably fewer than that in the ordinance version that Ms. Uh, McGannon drafted because she places hers on legal size sheets. Uh, I don't want to go over the entire thing uh, tonight because I don't think we really need to. I know that we've had a lot of neighborhood meetings. There's been a lot of discussions. Uh, it seems that the uh, neighborhood has received this very well. I think that there is a view that this will be a positive measure that will improve the uh, property values. There is one part of it that I do want to read, and this is uh, the intent and purpose. And then I'm going to step down and allow the public hearing to proceed. The intent and purpose of these city core overlay district regulations is to preserve and protect existing development patterns that predate the mid-1950s in portions of the city of Murfreesboro that were originally developed before that time and to ensure the compatibility of new development in those older portions of the city. In addition, the city core overlay district is intended to promote reinvestment in the areas of the city originally developed prior to the mid-1950s by modifying the development standards that could add expense without improving the safety or compatibility of the resulting development. It is recognized that land within the city core overlay district is already predominantly developed and that in order for there to be beneficial redevelopment of existing properties, relief from the otherwise applicable standards may be necessary. It is not intended for use in the creation of new subdivisions in undeveloped areas. So th that is really encapsulate what we've been trying to accomplish with these um, amendments. One last thing I do want to mention, and I think I, I should have mentioned it, uh, and that is that a large part of this area that is zoned commercial highway has existing residences. They're very small lots. The problem is that under the current zoning, those existing residences become non-conforming uses. And were they to be damaged or destroyed by fire, uh, they could not reestablish their homes. So uh, we're creating a situation, or we are allowing a situation with these amendments that in the city core overlay district, in the commercial highway district, you will be allowed to reestablish single-family homes, uh, as well as uh, two- and three-unit structures if they there. So I wanted to add that because that's, that's something that has concerned me a, a great deal as I've talked with property owners over the past several years about the residentially uh, used properties in the commercial areas of uh, that area of our community. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Uh, certainly I'll be available after the public hearing if there are more questions. Uh, after this public hearing, there will be a series of public hearings to implement this. First, to create the boundaries of the district that Ms. Ely will introduce. Uh, and uh, then the certain tweaks in the zone in that area. The plan Commission did unanimously recommend this. They didn't do it with just one meeting. We went through several meetings. We even deferred action uh, an additional time after the public hearing to study it some more. So I'm available to answer your questions. So this obviously is not just absolutely set in stone. It, it can be changed at some date in the future if we found uh, problems that needed some certain resolution because of something that maybe wasn't completely addressed. Mayor, I certainly believe that, that to be the case. I expect that we're going to monitor how this works and look for ways to improve it if we find that there are ways that need to be improved. We've not gone as far in some respects as some communities have. This is, um, uh, I say, uh, not a baby step. It's a pretty big step, but it is a cautious step. And I think it really addresses a lot of the problems that we're facing. And it addresses one of the biggest concerns I have, and that is, were there to be a catastrophic storm, the people who own property there would be able to rebuild a lot of what they already have. No design standards or anything like that included in this? No, sir. We do not have design standards in the sense of masonry requirements or um, roof line requirements. 
Uh, but we do have a, the design requirements in the sense of setbacks, and that being the averaging that I talked about. We're wanting to, to see a, a lot of the same streetscape. So if you've got a eight foot setback and a 24 foot setback, you're going to average to 12, or you're going to average to 14, or how does that work? If I mean, obviously you've got two properties on either side of you. Well, it'd be 16 may... foot. If you've got the way the averaging setback works is that if you're in a uh, inter an interior lot, meaning you're not on a the corner, then you look at the setbacks on the houses beside you. Uh, if one of them is eight foot and the other is 24 foot, both of them. Uh, you know, and they are in existence. You add them together and divide by two, and that's your setback requirement. So it'd be 16 foot. Well, let's see if it'd be 8 foot and 24 foot, that would be a 32 divided by two. That's 16 foot setback. And and if that pushes you out of the setback for the back lot, for uh, the back or the side or something like that, how do you resolve that? Do you well, go to the BZA? Yes, sir. That would be correct. There will still be an avenue to go to the BZA when there are unusual circumstances and hardships on property owners. So if somebody wanted to do 14 instead of 16 or 12 instead of you could get well, a little bit of relief that way? They would have a by right at the 16 in the example I gave. But if they were still having a problem, they still could go to the BZA. And when I say a problem, lots of times you find that these old lots have things like big trees. Uh, unusual uh, lot configurations that may still create a uh, situation where they do need relief. Narrow lots uh, sometimes come into play in these areas. Uh, as I mentioned, so many of the lots are smaller than the, the zoning that's uh, out there. We don't see lots created uh, like a lot of these lots exist today. Other questions? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hog all the action, but uh, other questions? Thank you, Mr. A. Lott. If there are no other questions, then at this time we'll open the public hearing and anyone wishing to speak for or against this amendment uh, dealing with the creation of a city core overlay. And there are other public hearings, too, which will be on zoning or rezoning in this particular area. But we're now looking at just the amendment which creates this city core overlay district. Please step to the microphone and give us your name and address. Is anyone here wishing to speak for or against? Last chance. If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time and we'll consider for passage on first reading an ordinance to amend Appendix A Zoning, Sections 15 and 24 and Chart 2, dealing with the creation of a City Corps Overlay CCO District. Move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Thank you. Please call the roll. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Vice Mayor Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bray. Aye. At this time, pursuant to a resolution adopted by City Council on November 8, 2012, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider proposed land to be included in the City Core Overlay CCO District. Planning staff is the applicant. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18th. 2012 issue of a local newspaper. Welcome, Ms. Ely. Thank you, Mayor Bragg. Good evening. Good evening, Council Members. Our next public hearing this evening does deal with the CCO Overlay District. You did just um, decide to approve the ordinance that would create the CCO Overlay, the City Core Overlay District. Our next step is to identify the properties that will be located within the CCO District. You have before you a map that shows the area recommend by, recommended by Planning Commission to be included in this area. Uh, Mr. Adelot mentioned that this has been a long process and we've been studying these properties for a while. Initially, the study area was much larger and that was what was taken to Planning Commission. Uh, it was scaled back from the study area to the area which you see before you on, in the map. It's the, what's within the area shaded blue. So it's south of East Main Street, west of Middle Tennessee Boulevard, north of Mercury Boulevard, northwest Broad Street, and then just east of the square. After the Planning Commission held a public hearing on this item. They made a motion to defer, the, defer it until our next meeting. The next meeting, they amended the map so that it would remove the historic district from the CCO overlay. So you can see that the northern properties, which have been taken out, run, are the properties that are within the historic overlay district. So those have been removed. 
The Planning Commission also took out the property zoned RS8, single family residential district, so those are no longer a part of the recommendation. And the Planning Commission took out some areas along Northwest Broad Street, which uh, will primarily be for motor, motor vehicle sales, and, and they're along Northwest Broad Street and west of Many Avenue. So the City Council can consider this area. They can consider adding the CCO to these properties or to a smaller area if that's your preference, but you cannot expand that area without, us, without the Planning Commission studying and recommending the area. So I just wanted to give you um, some options on how you can move forward with, it, with this. It is the Planning Commission's unanimous recommendation for you to include all these properties shown on the map within the CCO overlay district. If you have any questions, myself or Mr. Aylott would be glad to answer them either before or after the public hearing. Any questions from Ms. Ailey before I open the public hearing? <clears throat> Ms. Ailey, what does the green represent on our green? map? Can I see what you're looking at? <laughs> okay. Um, the purple is the historic district, and that was what was excluded. The RS8, which is the green area, is what was excluded. So the green area is the RS8 area that was removed from the CCO overlay. And there was one other question that someone wanted me to ask about. Is, are there lots that go from Maine to Vine that are half one and half the other with the same ownership? Um, the lots aren't split. There may be lots that are owned by the same owner that are adjacent to each other, but we followed property lines. We okay. didn't go yeah, they're not in split. the middle of property okay. lines. It may look, I, I struggled with a boundary that you could see, so I made the line <clears throat> wide so that you could see the line, but then it also kind of, if it appears like it's going in the middle of other lots, that's not what's happening. It's going along the property lines, but it's just so, if I made it as wide as the property lines, you couldn't have seen the map, and so I just wanted to be clear. That, that answer, that's answered my question. I couldn't see it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? All right, if there are no other questions, then I'll open the public hearing, and anyone wishing to speak for or against the zoning of these properties in the area of the city core overlay, please step forward and give us your name and address. Is anyone here wishing to speak? If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time and we'll consider for passage on first reading an ordinance to zone an area as a city core overlay district. Somebody will have it taken out. That's better. Mr. Gilly, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Smotherman. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. At this time, pursuant to a resolution adopted by City Council on November 8, 2012, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning property located at 421 South Academy Street from General Office Residential <coughs> OGR District <coughs> to Highway Commercial CH District. Planning staffs the applicant notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18th, 2012 issue of a local newspaper. Ms. Ely, proceed. Thank you. This next public hearing is to consider zoning a property which you just um, made, a rec or made a decision to include in the City Corps Overlay District. This property is currently zoned OGR, which is General Office District Residential, and you can see it on the map on the screen. It's the parcel that's shaded blue. It is Planning Commission's recommendation that you rezone this property from OGR to CH because you have included it in the CCO district. Had you not included it in the CCO district, then we would recommend no change to the zoning. But because it will now be in the CCO district, um, and zoning it to CH would make it consistent or have the same zoning as the properties around it, the use that's that is currently there, which is single-family house, would continue to be permitted. So changing the zone would allow the use to continue to um, be a permitted use as it is now, but it also would allow it to be developed if somebody had a decision, wanted to redevelop it in the future, consistent with the other properties on South Academy Street. So it is Planning Commission's unanimous recommendation that you change the zoning of the parcel at 421 South Academy Street from OGR to CH, Highway Commercial District, with the understanding it's in the CCO Overlay District. Is that next to Bradley Academy? It's not next to it, I don't think. It's near. Huh? Is it right beside it? It's right beside it. It is. The Bradley Academy is to the north. Right. The larger parcel to the north. 
All right. Along the hash So line. it's a single family residence now? It is. And Did the council since 84 put that as OGR? No, that was, um, I think, with the community. Yes. Okay. The, the uh, city actually uh, rezoned that because previously it was on commercial highways similar to the other parcel on Verone uh, Castle Street. That you can see CL on the map. Which will be the next public hearing. Both of those uh, were to benefit from uh, community development funds mm -hmm. uh, to tear down the house and rebuild. The zoning didn't permit it, so we changed it to a one-off zoning. We're just putting it back where it was and where it needs to be with the city core overlay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. I knew there was a subtle nuance that the planning commission went through. All right. Any questions for Ms. Ailey before I open the public hearing? Then if not, I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this rezoning at 421 South Academy Street? Please step to the microphone and give us your name and address. Is anyone here wishing to speak? If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time. We'll consider for passage on first reading an order to rezone 421 South Academy Street to Highway Commercial CH District. Move oh, yeah, Second. Move for approval. I need a second. Mr. Young, you second. I'll second. Thank you very much. We have a motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Vice Mayor Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time, pursuant to a resolution adopted by the City Council on November the 8th, 2012, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning property located at 325 East Castle Street from local commercial CL District to highway commercial CH District. Planning staff's the applicant. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18, 2012 issue of a local newspaper. Proceed, Ms. Ely. Thank you. Our next public hearing is to consider changing the zoning for the property on East Castle Street, which we mentioned in the, during the previous item. The property is currently zoned CL and was rezoned such to allow um, funds to be approved to rebuild a single-family house that was located on the property. It's Planning Commission's recommendation that you change the zoning from CL to CH District. <coughs> so that we'll have that consistent zoning along East Castle Street with the knowledge that it's in the CCO overlay district. The CCO will allow single-family house by right in the CH district where it's not permitted as such um, for properties that are outside the CCO district. So this property um, is a single-family house. The use would be permitted by right if you do change the zoning to CH, so it wouldn't affect the use that's currently there, but it would also um, allow the property to develop similar to, if, if it were to redevelop, if that was anybody's wish, that they, it would be redeveloped similar to other properties adjacent to it along East Castle Street. And again, it was unanimously recommended that this zoning be changed from CL to CH. Thank you, Ms. Ely. You're welcome. Council, do you have questions for Ms. Ely before I open the public hearing? If not, I'll open the public hearing at this time. And anyone wishing to speak for or against this rezoning of the property at 325 East Castle Street, Please step to the microphone, give us your name and address. Is anyone here wishing to speak? If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time. We'll consider for passage on first reading an ordinance to rezone property located at 325 East Castle Street to Highway Commercial, CH District. Move for passage. Second. All right, motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Vice Mayor Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Pursuant to a resolution adopted by City Council on November 8, 2012, we'll now conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning property located along South Manny Avenue and East State Street from single family residential 4 RS4 District to Highway Commercial CH District. Planning staff is the applicant. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18th, 2012, issue of a local newspaper. Ms. Ely, proceed. Thank you very much. Our next public hearing is to con consider zoning several parcels from RS4, Single Family Residential District, to CH, Commercial Highway District. And these properties are also included in the CCO, over, CCO District, which you just approved. If you look at the map, you can see the two parcels to the southwest, one zoned OGR, one zoned CL. Those are, we just had the public hearings to change the zoning for those two properties to CH. And this next public hearing is also to zone the properties that you see in orange to CH. 
The properties are currently, some of them are some multifamily uses, some are single family uses, and a portion of it is the cemetery property. It's uh, Planning Commission's recommendation that you do change the zoning of these properties, CH. You can see that the properties mostly that are contiguous with this are zone CH, so it would be consistent with the properties that are along them on South Manny Avenue and Spring Street and Sevier Street. The, um, the CH zoning would allow the uses that are currently there to, be con to continue to be permitted by right and um, wouldn't change that because it is zone CCO. So it's staff's recommendation that, or it's planning commission's recommendation that you do change the zoning from RS4 to CH commercial highway district with the understanding it's in the CCO overlay district. Do you have any questions? Any Before questions for Ms. Hearing? Zealy? If there are no questions, then I'll open the public hearing at this time. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this rezoning of the area along South Manny Avenue and East Castle Street? Please step to the microphone, give us your name and address. Anyone wishing to speak? Last chance. If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time. We'll consider for passage on first reading an ordinance to rezone an area located along South Manny Avenue and East State Street to Highway Commercial CH District. Move for approval. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Vice Mayor Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. At this time, pursuant to a resolution adopted by the City Council on November the 8th, 2012, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning property located at 467 Hancock Street and the rear of 703 East Castle Street from a planned commercial development PCD district to a residential multifamily 16 RM16 District. The planning staff is the applicant. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18, 2012 issue of the local newspaper. Ms. Ailey. Thank you, sir. Our sixth public hearing this evening is to consider changing the zoning for some property that's located on the corner of East Castle Street and Hancock Street from PCD, Planned Commercial District, to um, RM16. One of the benefits of the decisions you made tonight are that um, Clearview, which is currently zoned RM16, before this new ordinance comes into effect is a non-conforming use. And so if something were to happen, it wouldn't be allowed to continue to operate there. But because of the CCO overlay district, Clearview is now a use that's permitted by right. In the same vein, this is the location of the Jeff's Family Friend Friendly Restaurant, which was Glanton's Market. To um, The only option that Mr. Sewell had to have a restaurant here was to go with the PCD zoning. So several years ago, City Council made a decision to change the zoning from what it was previously, RM16, to PCD to allow that restaurant. I think that as a community, it's a restaurant that we enjoy, and I think um, I can confidently say that it is an enhancement to this area and an enhancement to City Murfreesboro. So it's Planning Commission's recommendation that you change the zoning to RM16 since that zoning would allow the use that's currently there to be permitted by right and it would um, not complicate any future changes Mr. Sewell might need to make. As you know, if it's planned development, there's a program book that's submitted. It's very specific. And so if they want to make any kind of maybe parking lot modifications, they have to go through the legislative process again, which can take four to six months. So being a use that's permitted by right, that would make it easier for him to manage and maybe make some changes to his business. So it is Planning Commission's recommendation that you, change, you uh, rezone the property from PCD to RM16, and the decision was unanimous. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have, either before or after the public hearing. Any questions for Ms. Ailey? If not, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this rezoning of property located at 467 Hancock Street and the rear of 703 East Castle Street, please step to the microphone and give us your name and address. Is anyone wishing to speak? If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time and we'll consider for pass passage on first reading an ordinance to rezone property located at 467 Hancock Street in the rear of 703 East Castle Street to residential multifamily 16. So moved. Second. 
All right, thank you. Motion is second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. <coughs> Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. At this time, pursuant to a resolution adopted by City Council on November the 8th, 2012, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning properties along Castleview Court from planned residential development, PRD district, to single family residential RS4 district. Planning staffs the applicant. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18th, 2012 issue of a local newspaper. Ms. Ely. Thank you, sir. Our seventh public hearing this evening is to consider rezoning the property that is the Castleview subdivision from PRD, planned residential district, to RS4. The property, when, when a development was contemplated for the property, the option for the uh, developer was to zone the property to PRD, planned residential district, which has a program book and um, needs to be followed specific, or specifically, again, with any changes being approved by both Planning Commission and City Council. Um, with the changes that you've made regarding setbacks and, um, and it, would, it would be better for this property if it were rezoned from PRD to RS4. The, uh, the review process is a little simpler for them and the RS4 zone would allow the use by right and it would allow the setbacks to um, be allowed. So. Removing the PRD would, would not be something that would harm the property, so it's Planning Commission's recommendation that the properties do be zoned, the RS4 bulk zone instead of the PRD, Planned Residential District zone. Uh, the recommendation was unanimous, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have either before or after the public hearing. Questions for Ms. Ailey? If not, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this rezoning of property along Castleview Court to single-family residential four, please step forward. Give us your name and address. Anyone here wishing to speak for or against? If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time. We'll consider for passage on first reading an ordinance to rezone properties along Castleview Court to single-family residential <coughs> four, RS4 district. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. This time, pursuant to a resolution adopted by City Council on November the 8th, 2012, we'll conduct a public hearing to consider rezoning property bounded by South Academy, South Spring, East Main, and East Severe Streets from Highway Commercial CH District to Central Business District. CBD District. Planning staff is the applicant. Notice of the said public hearing was published in the November 18th, 2012 issue of the local newspaper. Ms. Ely. Thank you, sir. Um, our final public hearing this evening is to consider changing the zoning of property from CH to CBD, Central Business District. This is the only property rezoning that um, isn't contingent upon the CCO overlay district being established because the CBD, CBD district would be able to regulate these properties without the CCO district. So the uses are, would be permitted now as they would then, but it would change some of the requirements, such as properties in our central business district don't have minimum parking requirements for off-site. Of course, that makes sense because in our histor or in our, on our square, the property lines typically follow the building lines. We've, we see that this property that's currently zoned CH and shown as pink or purple, wh whichever color you'd like to call it on the screen, is um, it's already developed and it's, it looks a lot like the Central Business District. Quite frankly, if you were to walk around, you wouldn't know that the zoning was different. The property was zoned Central Business District before a comprehensive rezoning in 1984. At that time, it was zoned CH. Of course, the CH zoning um, really doesn't fit what you see there. And I guess I should describe the properties are located south of East Main Street, north of East Severe Street, west of South, south, or south Spring Street, and east of South Academy Street. And so it's Planning Commission's recommendation that you change the zoning for these properties to Central Business District. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have before or after the public hearing. And I, I would like to say there hasn't been a lot of people speaking at the public hearings, but we have had considerable input from the residents of the area and neighborhood meetings and various ways of communicating with them. So I, I feel almost, I mean, I guess it, it, it's a good sign that we've worked through the issues and we have a lot of support and sometimes when people aren't coming to the public hearings because they support something, but I don't want you to think there wasn't any involvement because this has been a long process and your planning staff has worked really hard to talk to people and to get the word out and I think that we've done a good job. So 
Nobody spoke tonight, which surprises me a little bit, but we have had a lot of community interaction. But that doesn't have to do with this rezoning. I just was surprised that nobody was saying anything. So this has two church properties on it between Maine and Vine, is that correct? It does, and those churches right now extend almost all the way to the property line or the edge of the right-of-way. So um, we have seen on one of them, I think they wanted, uh, one of them needed to get a variance to have an accessory structure um, because, of course, the CH district wouldn't allow it. The CH district requires 42-foot front setbacks, and none of those structures I think even come close to meeting that requirement for the front setback in addition to other, um, I think, non-conforming parts of the structure we could probably identify with a closer study. So we have the fire hall there too, the old it main is. fire hall? It is. Mr. Young, your property is here? Yes, sir. You're going to abstain from I voting? I am. I wanted to announce that, that my property, my primary uh, property is in this district and I plan to not vote on this. All right. Uh, any other questions regarding this? Uh, to Ms. Ely before I open the public hearing? If not, then I'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak uh, for or against this rezoning of property bounded by South Academy, South Spring, East Main, and East Severe Street to the Central Business District, CBD District, please step to the microphone give us your name and address. Anyone here wishing to speak? If not, I'll close the public hearing at this time. We'll consider for passage on first reading an ordinance to rezone property bounded by South Academy, South Spring, East Main, and East Severe Streets to Central Business CBD District. So moved. Second. Oh, That's Motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Vice Mayor Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Pass. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Did you have a comment, Mr. Washington? Yes, I want to commend uh, my fellow council members and, and especially the staff and administration for uh, working through this project process. It has been a long time coming. Um, I attended both uh, public hearings and listened to the, the residents' concerns. And I want the public to know a lot of this stuff does, does, does happen that you don't see. And a lot of decisions were made and compromises were made to trying to not to affect those who didn't want to participate and uh, affect those that it would enhance and help. So hopefully with this, this is just a, it'll probably be tweaked along the way. It's not a, no document, it's a perfect document when it first starts out. And and uh, I'm just tickled to death that that 75% situation goes away. So uh, I appreciate all the work and, and things that you all uh, did to make this get the force tonight and thank the planning commission members. That's it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Any other comments? All right. If not, again, I think all of us appreciate the staff's work on this and for working with the public, and we certainly appreciate the, our residents and business owners coming forward to help us through this extensive process. And I believe it is better, and if there are things that we need to change, certainly we will look at that in the future. This time we'll consider recommendations of the Planning Commission to schedule public hearings. A is an annexation of approximately 12.3 acres located along Highway 231 North, Lebanon Highway at Cherry Lane. Zoning of approximately 10.64 acres to Fringe Commercial CF District simultaneous with annexation along Highway 231 North, Lebanon Highway at Cherry Lane. And 13C is the rezoning of approximately 12.6 acres located along Memorial Boulevard at West Thompson Lane from Highway Commercial District to planned residential development and the rezoning of approximately 21.65 acres located along New Las Casas Highway from a planned commercial development PCD district to Highway Commercial CH district. Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mayor Bragg, members of the council. During its regular meeting on October 3rd, November 7th, November, and November 21 of this year, the Planning Commission conducted public hearings on the items that you uh, read into the record and studied those matters. Uh, after the uh, public hearings, uh, the, all of them were deferred, and then they were uh, brought back up for further study, and then ultimately have been recommended for approval. I believe these were unanimous recommendations. I think they were, but uh, we'll make sure we check on that before the public hearings. And all of these need to be scheduled for public hearings by the City Council. 
All right. The sense that Ms. McGannon is wishing to suggest a date. Ms. McGannon. Can it be that close to 2013? <laughs> Scary sound. <laughs> Scary. All right. January the 10th. Council members, does that meet with your approval? All right. There are no. Yes, move. We said public hearings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. Second that motion. All right. Motion and second. Please call the roll. <clears throat> Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gills Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. All right. Item 14 has been withdrawn, so we'll go on to 15. Consider for adoption a resolution amending the 2011 2012 budget. Ms. Mayor Wright, you're going to do that for us? Yes, sir. Uh, as part of wrapping up our final things we have to do to be able to put out our audit report for June 30, 12. We had a few funds that need to have budget amendments. Uh, the community development fund was mostly because of some program income and additional grant revenue that ran through that fund that was not originally planned for. The capital improvement contingency fund was uh, primarily because of the Amazon project as well as the school energy efficiency project that was fronted through the city through that fund and uh, those expenditures were quite large. The State Street Aid Fund had some additional paving work done and uh, that was also, although it was brought to council, it was not it was not something that we amended the budget at that time. So these are mostly housekeeping matters and uh, we recommend that you approve the uh, next item which is the resolution. All right, questions for Ms. Wright regarding these amendments to the 2011-2012 budget. Any questions? Then is there a motion that we adopt this resolution? So moved. Second. Thank you. A motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. <clears throat> Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. Smotherman. Aye. Vice Mayor Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Item 16 has been withdrawn. Beer permits. Ms. Wright. Mayor, we have two tonight. Uh, one is complete and ready for issuance upon your approval. It's for a restaurant at 536 North Thompson Lane, Suite D. Uh, they have met all the city's requirements. And the other is for a convenience store for a change of ownership at 904 Northwest Broad Street. They are still pending their building and code inspections. And uh, once those come back approved, we'd like to issue the permit. All right. You have these beer permits before you. Is there a motion that we accept? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. You have before you a list of the statements to be considered for payment. Any questions regarding the statements that are shown on our list? If there are no questions, shall we pay the bills? Move we pay the bills. Second. Thank you. A motion is second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gales Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. There's no board and commission appointments. Uh, other business from staff or city council to come before the council at this time. Anything else? Mr. Smotherman? Uh, I, I don't want this to go without being mentioned, and I know it happened about three weeks ago, but we lost a former city council member, Tommy Smith. And uh, I, I just want to acknowledge the, the service that he did for our community, and, and I know that uh, our prayers are with his family as they continue to grieve. Uh, also, uh, the Christmas tree lighting uh, on the public squares tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And the old time Christmas that the city's involved with at Cannonsburg will be from six to nine Friday and Saturday night. All right, our scribe, you've taken <laughs> care of us tonight. Thank you very much. And uh, certainly we do note the passing of Vice, former Vice Mayor uh, Tommy Smith and State Representative also. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Anything else? Yep. 
Yes, Ms. McCannon. I forgot something. Oh, I oh, my. oh, no. Oh, my. Oh, no. oh, my. Is, this a, is it too late, counsel? Oh, okay. Go Let Ms. McCannon speak. speak. <laughs> <laughs> the women have to stick together. Go on, Ms. McCannon. <laughs> Um, we had set a public hearing. The applicant requested that the date be changed. I believe that has been communicated to the members of the council uh, by email. Uh, we did not advertise it be, um, because of the applicant's request. Uh, we want to reschedule that for the January 10th date. Also? Yes. All right. So is there a motion then that we move that public hearing to January the 10th? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Mr. Gilly? Aye. Ms. Gels Harris? Aye. Mr. Smotherman? Aye. Vice Mayor Washington? Aye. Mr. Young? Aye. Mayor Bragg? Aye. Anything else? Last chance. You're adjourned. <laughs>